It is 6.50. This is your morning in eight minutes. We are following breaking news out of Memphis this morning. A massive police investigation is underway, underway where police officers may have been hurt. The officers were responding to a call about a suspicious car driving recklessly on Charter Avenue around 2 a.m. That call later upgraded to a shooting. Our station in Memphis has a reporter outside of Regional 1 where officers are gathering now. We'll let you know as soon as we get an update inside your WVLT News app. Well, Knox County's 20 year growth plan is moving on to its next steps after passing at a special meeting last night. The Farragut Board of Mayor and Aldermen reversed its original decision to vote against the plan. The growth plan narrowly passed the five person board with three votes. County officials say the growth plan will help Knox County handle the rapid population growth while preparing for future growth. Some residents argue the plan doesn't do enough for Farragut except bring more traffic. Mayor Jacob says the growth plan technically isn't official yet. It still has to be approved by County Commission one more time where it was approved unanimously the first time. And this morning, authorities need your help finding a Knoxville woman and her three children. Knoxville police say she took them from DCS custody. An endangered child alert is in effect this morning for four-year-old Josh and one-year-old Jay-Z Hollins, as well as 17-year-old Raymond McAlpin. Knoxville police have a warrant out for the arrest of their mother, Tierra Shelton. KPD says Shelton took the kids last week, but were seen in the Oakwood and Lincoln Park area on Wednesday night. If you have any information or know where they could be, call 911. And meantime, police in Hamblin County are still looking for this missing man. This is Anthony Tony Williams from Morristown. He was last seen March 30th at the LOC bar on Buffalo Trail. That was Saturday night. If you see him or know anything about where he may be, call police. And this morning, reactions are pouring in over the death of former football star O.J. Simpson. Family members say he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren when he died at the age of 76 following a battle with cancer. For many people, the reaction to O.J. Simpson's death has been as complicated as his legacy. Simpson, known as the Juice, burst onto the national scene as a star running back at USC, winning the Heisman Trophy before going on to a Hall of Fame career with the Buffalo Bills. He was acquitted in the 1994 killings of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman, later sent to jail for nine years for armed robbery. OJ was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He died at 76. And a heads up for Ford drivers this morning, Ford Broncos being recalled due to a potential gas leak that could start a fire. Federal regulators say gas can leak from fuel injector, uh, gas can leak onto fuel injector, injectors and the hot surfaces. Broncos Sport SUVs from 2022 to 23 model years, as well as Escape SUVs from 2022 are impacted. All have 1.5 liter engines. Ford says it has reports of five fires, but no crashes. If you have one of these, please call your dealership for a free fix. Well, you may have seen the public sculptures around downtown Knoxville and places like Crooch Park. It's all part of Art in Public Places program by Dogwood Arts. That program is now expanding and happening today. The first piece will be installed along the South Knoxville waterfront. Later this year, three new sculptures will be added along the Greenway in Blount County near the theater in the park off Lamar Alexander Parkway. And also happening today, VFL Josh Dobbs is back in Knoxville to host his third annual VFL Charitable Golf Classic. The tournament starts at 9 o'clock this morning. It'll be held at the Tennessee National Golf Club in Loudoun. There will be several other balls in this week to compete in the tournament. And it's all to give back to the Dobbs Foundation, which started three years ago to give back to cities that have supported Dobbs and his career. That includes Knoxville. And WBLT is proud to be your official station of the Vols over on the gridiron where the Vols are getting ready for the annual orange and white game. Yeah, it's tomorrow at one o'clock at Neyland Stadium. It's a chance to get a first look at the new team ahead of the 2024 campaign. If you're planning on heading down there, Vol Village opens up at 1030. The Vol Walk takes place at 1110. Tickets are sold out. They're renovating part of the stadium, so it's a much smaller crowd, but there is a free watch party on campus. We got all the details you need for the orange and white game inside your WVLT news app. Calling all Lego lovers this weekend. Brick Blast is kicking off in Knoxville. Yeah, the Lego event has something for everyone to enjoy. It's hosted by an adult Lego club, but all ages are welcome to the family friendly event. There you'll see hundreds of uniquely built Lego designs. We talked to the organizers of the event this week who tell us there will be games for kids, a scavenger hunt and an interactive build area you can build freely. It all gets started tomorrow morning at the Middlebrook Pike United Methodist Church. Admission and parking is free and open to the public.
keeping an eye on that first alert traffic for you this morning. Taking a live look there at I 640 at Western Avenue where you can see it's nice and empty out there as you're getting this Friday morning started. It won't stay that way, especially as we get into that morning rush. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. But taking a look there, I 40 just east of downtown looking pretty good going into downtown Knoxville, especially for this time of the morning. So we'll keep an eye on that for you, but we're looking good so far. Five minutes to seven now. So again, we got some big improvements for the weekend. We do have to get through those scattered storms this afternoon. If you got some yard work you need to catch up on, let things dry out a bit with more sun. We do have some stray rain chances ahead, but that's really after this batch slides towards us. So you can see that further north and west right now. So that's what I'm tracking to roll in later today. This morning we're rolling out clouds from last night's showers. I love this view where we can see the clouds highlighted as that sun is coming up this morning. Temperatures settling down mid 40s on the plateau, upper 40s to low 50s right now throughout much of East Tennessee. But we do have those clouds circling back around again with some scattered rain and storms. I do expect a couple of pop ups midday to afternoon. Those gusts still around 30 35 miles per hour at times throughout the day, but then the rain tapers off this evening. The winds back off. We're left cooler at only 60 degrees and then tonight a little bit more of a chill. Just that stray rain early in the night, more clearing dropping to the 40s. So as we go into your weekend, keep that in mind as we do at least have a good warm up tomorrow afternoon into Sunday. We'll stay mostly dry for a few days. We are tracking midweek warm front and then an end of week cold front. So still more ahead in that first alert eight day planner. Yeah, Heather, I look at that and I go, OK, Saturday I'll mow the lawn. <laughs> It'll grow back by Tuesday and then we'll That's be back fair. at it on Thursday. That's fair. Yeah. So. I love it. It's spring. <laughs> we'll take it. 656, headed over to WBXX, the CW Knoxville. Have a good Friday.